Hey, welcome back to Drinking It In. I am your host, Chris Cassara. We are here to help you know more and drink better, and I wanted to uh, spend some time talking about the Falangina experience that we had, or that I had about a week ago. Um, you, you know, I often have, I've done some, some episodes uh, where we talk about how wine evolves from um, day over day, right? And, and certainly something like this Brunello, right? We, we decant it, we taste it over a couple of days if it lasts that long in, in your house. And, um, and a wine really changes, right? It really changes as, you know, as time evolves, it gets more oxygen and, and um, it can, and the change can be significant, right? I mean, some of the ways a wine changes is that flavors evolve, but also just you know, decanting a wine at times can almost make a, a harsh and borderline undrinkable wine very enjoyable after you know a couple of hours of air. Like I've seen that happen. But the Falangina situation that I experienced about a week ago was something completely different in that. Um, so I, and I'll show, I have a picture right here of the uh, Beneventano Falangina uh, wine that we that I opened um, as part of uh, you know to get together at my mother-in-law's house and um, it, 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 first off the cork the cork screw this beautiful oxo cork screw you know um, actually just broke in half when we we're opening the bottle so uh, that created two problems one as you, if you follow me on Instagram you saw I use a pliers to get the uh, to get the cork out of the bottle. But number two, it really made it um, so that I was, so that we really probably weren't gonna open up another bottle of wine. So the Falangina, which is a full-bodied, um, medium to full-bodied white wine from Italy, usually a good Chardonnay replacement. Um, I had opened it during the day and the wine was, it wasn't bad, right? Like the Pinot Grigio I talked about a few, uh, a few episodes ago, but it just was, the finish for on the wine was just so bitter that, you know, just drinking it throughout the day as an aperitif or whatnot, it just wasn't pleasurable at all. So I was sort of at the point where I was like, all right, well, I guess I just won't have any more wine today, or maybe I'll have a little Prosecco, you know, because there's some Prosecco left. And um, so I still had some wine in my glass because I had poured a pretty good, good glass. And, um, we sat down for dinner and it was ham, scalloped potatoes, some stuffed mushrooms and uh, some asparagus. And what happened with the wine when it was paired with that food was amazing because all of a sudden it turned into this peachy, citrusy, fruity wine that was um, round and almost somewhat luscious. It was a complete polar opposite from the just bitterness, 100% bitterness that was present on the palate uh, when you were drinking the wine by itself. So it really was, it was really miraculous. And I was glad we didn't open up another bottle of wine uh, because otherwise I wouldn't have experienced that particular um, scenario. And I just thought it was worthwhile explaining to you guys um, really what I experienced just to see, again, so you don't, maybe you don't give up on a bottle of wine if you're drinking it by, by itself and you know, you don't, um, and you don't really like it, but you know, maybe you have some food on the table. Maybe some food is, is uh, you know, coming, you know, meals coming in, a, in an hour or so. Make sure you give that wine a chance with the food um, because it can be a completely different experience. Now, in the end, I feel like I should try um, to actually pair ham and falangina to see if that was sort of where the magic was. Or maybe it was just the creaminess of the scalloped potatoes that that really uh, interacted well with the wine. Um, I, I didn't analyze it that closely, so I can't give you a uh, real um, scientific opinion, shall we say, but um, hopefully you guys are understanding what I'm putting down. Um, so that's the moral. The moral of the story is, uh, you know, just when you think a wine uh, is, you know, not something that you're enjoying, something can change. Maybe a little food, maybe a little air, and it turns into something completely different and hopefully a lot better. Um, that's about it, guys. I'm setting up for a, next, a few, uh, few episodes um, coming up in the future. We're gonna be seeing a lot of red wine over the next couple of months, just as an FYI. Whether it's timely or not with the seasons, a lot of red wine. 
Thanks again for joining. Thanks for the love. Thanks for subscribing. And I'll talk to you soon. Cheers. Thank you.